Of course, they're pies. Cold hands make the boldest pastry, after all. And it is freezing up there. You really must try it. It's the food of the people. And those people are yetis. Skills are non-transferable. I was famished when I arrived at the Royal Tumble Hotel. So much so that I took advantage of my kitchenette and feasted greedily on some toast. When I returned from a walk, I was stunned to find that all crumbage had been decrumbled. The bed was made and the toilet spotless. Every sign of life had been washed away. You've got to ask yourself, had I really been staying here? Indeed, do I exist at all? Lovely stuff! Janitor required in bathroom. End of year is approaching. It's too late to start trying.
the academic year is now over. The end of year results have been released. Luck won't help you now. trip was all about regional delights and cultural differences. One man's casual volvo is another's world-shattering epiphany. The people of Smogley have been crusting and dusting their fish for as long as anyone can remember. But at the recently opened What's the Batter, they use a unique cheesy gubbin crumb. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I can safely say that it was the cheesiest fish this DJ had ever eaten. <laughs> That's a winner. Hello. Welcome, new students. We're more afraid of you than you are of us. are asked not to ask questions.
I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I enjoyed my trip around this wonderful, mysterious county of ours. But for now, all of this talk about food has made me hungry. So I'm off to the fridge to take out the first thing I find and cover it in mayonnaise. Until next time, I've been Ricky Hawthorne. Cheers!
It's the Harrison Wolf Show, baby. All right. Oh. This is Harrison Wolf bringing you the Harrison Wolf Power Hour. I've been seeing a lot of stuff about colleges lately. Lots of study here, learn so and so, qualification this and qualification that. But let me tell you something they don't want you to know. It's a scam, all of it. Students are reminded to set reminders. on campus, oh no. are reminded that this is the fun part.
Futurism is not a belief system. We've all been quizzed at school, but what really happens during a test? You get a question, you write down your answer, and then some bozo tells you that you're wrong. But who's to say they're right? What's so great about their answers? If we've all got the same answers, then what's the point of there being so many of us, huh? I tell you, it's a crime that they make kids take their tests. Not a real criminal kind of crime, of course. But it's majorly uncool. And that's the kind of crime. There's a fly in here. I shouldn't have to tell you, but if Jumbo McNally's getting involved in something, you know it's bad. Jumbo University? Ha! Huh, what a racket! You can teach Mr. McNally a lesson by signing my petition to have him fired into space. Frequently asked questions. No, I will not be your friend.
education is non-refundable. Cheesy Gubbins. One big gubbin. Out of your dreams and into your mouth. for anything they excavate. Thank you.
tuition fees are expensive and education is priceless. It's the Harrison Wolf Show, baby. All right. Oh hey, this is Harrison Wolf, and thanks for stopping by. Today, we're going to be talking about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. The one thing you need when things are getting hairy. You hear something funny outside, or you're just hiding from the milkman. That's right. Today, we're talking panic rooms. Frequently asked questions. I believe that smell is you. It's almost the end of the academic year. In case you hadn't noticed. Intruders on campus, you know what to do.
students are reminded to be in two places at once. Every good panic room starts with its supplies. Now some things are a must. Your crackers, your flashlight, your bottles of water. Sure, but don't be afraid to show some personality. I, for one, keep a bowling ball in my panic room. I find it's the perfect place to practice. Now, when it comes to surveillance, I'm strictly an anti-camera kind of guy. My philosophy is, I can't see you, you can't see me. So, I like to keep things as low-tech as possible. I'd recommend strategically placed strings attached to some bells. You hear a ring, and you got yourself a visitor. Of course, sometimes it's the doorbell, and you really do have a visitor. If you want to get real crafty, just leave a load of rakes in your yard. No one suspects a rake in the yard, but you'll hear the sucker when he steps on one and takes a handle to the chops. Ouch. Distracted students should pretend that they're listening.
stupid questions will make you look stupid. Milkmaid. We use real dairy style ingredients in our milkshakes for a level of consistency that just isn't natural. Meaning that every glass of Milkmaid is eerily similar to the last. Wow! Mmm, Milkmaid. Now that's good milk. Not technically milk.
here's a question from Gyro in Duckworth. What are some of your favorite panic room pastimes? And thanks for the question, Gyro. I find that you can have a lot of fun with a little bouncy ball. In fact, one time I was bouncing, lost track of time, and it turned out that I've been doing it for 16 hours. I went cold turkey after that, meaning I was hungry and took a turkey sandwich out of the freezer. Mmm. Turkey. Tuition fees may be spent on administrative bonuses. Here's one for the more advanced panickers amongst you. It's important to be one step ahead. What do I mean by that? Well, you could do a number of things. You could have a trap door for sneaky getaway. You could install your panic room in a hall of mirrors. Or you could hang a sign on the door that says, Out for lunch. <laughs> they won't know what's hit them. Students are reminded that there's no such thing as free time.
students are reminded to find themselves. Plants need water, remember? Let's take one more question before we wrap up here. Hmm, here's a good one. What type of wood would you recommend for the furniture in your panic room? Well, you can't go wrong with oak. That baby's a classic for a reason. Me, personally, I like maple. It's heavy, and I like the added water resistance. Plus, it's fun to say. Maple. Off to build your brand new panic rooms. Don't forget to take a radio so Harrison can come along for the ride. Hmm. 
Now, I, I know what you're thinking, but Harrison, can't they track me with the frequencies? And the answer is, probably yes, but the Harrison Wolf Show is worth the risk. Happy hiding, listeners. <laughs>
If it's not on your CV, it didn't happen. Not to me. Sir Nigel Bickleworth on Two Point Radio. Hello, hello. Today we're discussing for the very first time, ironically, sequels. Yes, that's right. When the wicked and wretched behind something decide that it's a good idea to bless us all once again with the second pressing of their already tenuous idea. Students are asked not to ask questions. passwords. Sorry. It's almost the end of the academic year, in case you haven't noticed. Sequelization, or the art of doing something again, is derived from the Greek word sequalid, meaning lazy, repetitive.
or in some way redundant. Hmm, it would seem that the ancients are trying to tell you something. Ambitionless auteurs of our times. Equalization, or the art of doing something again. Wait, no, we've covered that already. See what I did there? I almost repeated myself and then decided not to. It is possible. Up next, something fresh. We have a class without a teacher. That's a class without a teacher.
ask questions. No, I will not be your friend. to the Crumley Student Range, instant casserole. You want a warming meal, but you've not got all day. Come on! With Crumley's new instant casserole range, you just add water, and you've got something a lot like casserole. Mmm, just like Mama used to make. Frequently asked questions. No, your chicken should not be pink. Thank you. 